Excuse me. Your approach dictates where you want your man to go and where help is coming from. You have to be able to read the posture of the ball carrier in order to approach appropriately. Poor approach equals poor on ball defense. Either when your man catches the ball in a black stand and position to push the dodge to a specific spot on the field. Unless your man is catching the ball by the midline or end line, we should be able to get out to our man's hand every time we approach. It is difficult to get a piece of a dodger that has running room. Alright, and that's key. Every time we go out to our man, we want to be able to at least get a piece of him so now we can push him off his line, catch up, take a good angle, and not force him to a spot. Uh, landmarks, we use this term a lot on the field. Um, this is off ball, it's a team concept, but it's very important in one on one defense. Um, so if the ball's behind, we want our guys down low in helping. Um, your next to the ball, we want passing lanes so that your next to the ball, your half of the field is increased and you're able to get out uh, when your man catches the ball on his hands ready to play. All right, this is approach drill. You're going to see very simple, just four lines on the whistle. This guy comes up, you're going to see they're broken down, their sticks are out, their heads are up, their chest up, and then leg stands. All right, you're going to see the shorties. We always want our hands up and out. We don't want to drop our hands down here and fire waist. All right, we always want to keep them up. Because now, instead of trying to bench press your man and pushing him out, you're a lot stronger this way than trying to do this. You start doing this and your feet slow down. Hands out, just keep them down the line. The next part of this drill you see is going to be a drop step to a cross check. All right, every time we drop step, especially behind the net, you want to be able to drop step, push them off their line, and now take an angle so they don't get past that goal. Ball drill. Just another approach drill. We line up about 10 yards apart. Right? And they just go in and they're breaking down each other as if uh, the other man has the ball. So every time they're in, ball, take a drop step, back in. Yes. Variation of this you can do now as they're back battling, just pulling your hips, turning them on. Uh, next drill, corner drill. All right, you're going to see. First time through this, it's going to be slow. It's not supposed to feel good, it's supposed to burn a little bit. All right, the guy's supposed to sit down nice and low, the chest up, head up, stick remains out, and all is moving their feet and shuffling across. Make sure their feet aren't clicking or they're crossing as they shuffle. Nice and low, all right, and as we move on through this, you'll see second time through, you can speed it up a little bit. And then last, you has gotta be going down the side, exploding, when you open up your hips and running across. All right, and that's one of the most important parts of uh, one-on-one -on -one defense is you being able to drop step, open up your hip, hips, and run. All feet, it's all footwork. Working on exploding out of the corner, getting your feet going, running across. Sticks always stay out, hands always stay up. All right, now in this clip, this is totally right. You're going to watch this guy right here. All right, as the ball comes down, he's got a good approach. As the man catches the ball, he's broken down, ready to go. And now he's forcing him back to X. We'll get, we'll get into the technique later on. But as you can see, a good approach results in good defense. All right, again, right here, his man catches the ball, and he's ready to go. I was able to push him out wide where he's not really a threat, but we'd rather fight from the goal line and force him back to X so he can't see the entire field. Alright? One more time. You're going to see his man catches the ball, his stick remains out, and he's getting going, and stay up and out. You should be bench pressing him right there, his hands should be up, and just it's a light cross check, moving him off his line. This all goes back to the landmarks that we were talking about before, where now Cody. He's at his landmark where he's supposed to be on the field. That helped his approach. He's out to his man where he catches it, broken down, and he's ready to play. He's not getting that attack in any room to run. All right, approaching late. Now, when we approach late, <coughs> you're going to see here, we don't do a good job of it, is <coughs> as the ball comes out, all right, as the ball comes out here, we should be standing upfield. All right, and the reason why we stand upfield is now because the defense knows that you're only going to have to slide to this area of the field. All right, and two, now he doesn't get to the middle of the field for a shot. 
We're staring at the ball here, not doing a good job of seeing our man turn our head. And now we're late getting out, which now gives him up, gives up a right shot in the center of the field. Alright, we should be upfield, stepping upfield, driving him up and now back down the sun. Another example of a bad approach. Alright, we're late getting out, down here. Alright, when he catches the ball, we're still moving toward him, and then we get beat up and up. They get getting out, our feet are still going toward the ball. We should be broken down, stick out, ready to play. We're not. Now we get beat up and under for a goal. Presence. Um, this is what we were talking about before. Coach T, Coach, you mentioned um, a couple of names. Steve Romano, John Riker, um, Ryan Riley, our three uh, rope guys. They have presence on the ball. It's not really something that we coach. They're ready to play. They have an attitude. They look the part. Um, they set the tone, challenge man to beat you, and they're broken down, stick out, and it's up, like you said. Um, this is more of that attitude that we want to instill in our guys to uh, have this be ready to play. Uh, now, four spot one on ones. I started doing this drill this year. It's more of an indoor drill. We've seen the box game, nice and tight. The whole idea is it's all about footwork. Uh, all about footwork, moving your feet, forcing to a spot on the field where we have help. Uh, you're keeping your hands up on your man, constant pressure. The cones are set up to the edge of the paint, and the paint is the area of the field we want to protect. It's all inside. All right? We want to slide to the edge of the paint. So now, those cones are at 12 yards, they're five yards out from the, uh, from the crease. Now what we want to do is constant pressure on our man, forcing him down the side, forcing him underneath from behind. In this drill, we, took, we take away the long pole sticks and we, give them, we cut down uh, the shafts to about a foot and a half each. So the focus is more on footwork rather than uh, the line on the And the next part of this drill also is this great conditioning drill. You have one guy in there the whole time, he's doing four one-on-ones, uh, by the end of it he's exhausted, and then you really get to see who's mentally tough, who's following their rules, who's keeping their hands up, moving their feet, and forcing them to a spot when, uh, if they do get beat, where the help's coming from. Could be just also to build comfort or your comfort level on covering the ball in different areas of the field. You get some of these close defensemen that they only feel at home the call. next to right. main focus is getting your hands on your man and playing physical. Alright, so we we'll talk about presence. First on technique and strength, trying to instill your toughness to defend the needs. Alright, and now you'll see too, head up, chest up, that's going to be good defense. Head down, chest down, it's going to cause you to lunge, step out, and now you're at risk of getting beat. Also works on pushing your guy off his line. All right, in this drill, offensively, you don't want your guys just putting their shoulder down and running straight through the guy. All right, that doesn't do anyone any good. What you want is you want the defender to be about two yards off the cone, so he can start his feet moving a little bit. And the <coughs> offensive guy has to go back and forth, just running around, trying to make a lacrosse move to touch the cone, not just running through the defense. How long does the defender on the cone? Fifteen seconds. If that, ten seconds. Usually, quick moving drill. All right, now here's an example of having presence on the ball. All right, just so you guys know, this is going to be the first possession in the Syracuse scrum. All right, and now here's Ryan Riley, who talked about before, and this is going to be Jojo Marasco, one of their better players at Syracuse. All right, now right away, he's going to set the tone. He's going to see, you're going to see him push him off his line. He's got to throw checks. He is a little um, out of control. He does get turned. But what happens is he's physical and now puts Jojo to the ground. <coughs> He's going to step the tone for the rest of the game. You would hope. So you see, sticks on him. Good cross check, goes him off his line. He's running directly up field, throwing checks. All right, a little results there, but now, cross checks him as he shoots. All right, technique up top. All right, we have two ways we approach. We approach flat, which we're talking about right now. And we also approach for down the side. When we approach flat, our uh, goal is to force our man to the middle of the field or to as we can. Our body <coughs> should be between our man and the net. All knee goal. Line up your nose on his inside shoulder. All right, we'll, we'll touch upon that a little bit. Uh, must get peace. Initial contact of our Dodger is essential. We will not be successful if we cannot take our man off his path. Do not step directly upfield when we approach flat. All right, that's key. This is going to make you off balance and add position to defend. We should be stepping on 45 and riding our man's hip. Trail your man once we have him going to the middle of the field, slash we can, we must prevent the rollback to his strong hand. 
This will throw our slot in if we do get rolled back in the middle of the field. All right? And while we land flat, all right, especially if they're like in a high wing offense and they're dodging from that wing area, if we start throwing them back into traffic, now our adjacent help, we're able to, if the guy doesn't cut through a fade, we're able to show a little bit, stay low with the dodge, and now fill space up. So now, not only does he have someone on him, but we have a hot guy in the middle of the field, as well as someone who's standing right there, who's not going to, per se, help or slide to him, but now he's looking at someone in his path. All right, here's just a simple drill we do. We have lines right here, two cones. This is to approach flat, this is to approach down the side. Right now, just call out flat or down the side. This guy has to react, he has to line up appropriately, you throw a hole in the drill, and they go. You have to keep him out of the cones. So it's going to be flat, right there, ride the hip, we're on trail, not getting rolled back. All right, an example of this. Again, you see up top right here, he's more at the corner of the box, but this is the high wing set we were talking about. All right, and now we get a piece, and now what we want to do is ride him all the way across. We're showing from here, filling space, and now we just keep riding him down the side, throwing up the whole offense. All right, down the side, right alley, right foot, should be up field, and should be on a 45 to the sideline. Short sticks have their, uh, have their stick. Upfield at all times. Do not be squared to the side at the top of the box. You're asking to be S dodged or blown out. It's very difficult to get a piece of your man when you're squared to the sideline at the top of the box. If there's a low wing dodge, then we'll be flat to the sideline. If our man tries to beat us to the top side, step upfield and punch his top shoulder, driving him back down the side. Always throw your man down the side so he's unable to roll back to his strong hand and see the field. On all roll back, rollbacks, step upfield and punch, lift, forcing it back down the side. Our sticks are upfield in case a man brings their stick in front of their face. And never bring the stick over the top of the man. You're asking to be rolled back. All right, just turn the lights on, please. All right, just to show you, now the net right. back over here, all right? I'm going down the side. I want to approach here on a 45. I don't want to be flat and upfield because now he's looking at all the screen space. And what I'm going to have to do is lunge at him. So instead, I'm at 45, so now if he does get to the top side, I'm able to take my top hand, punch, all right, staying at his hips, and now I run directly upfield, forcing him back down the side. That's getting a piece. Once I have him going down the side now, all right, he's here, I just want to locate this back shoulder. All right, I'm one step behind him, I'm able to, if I have to, push him off, but now I'm in a good spot to, if he does go back, I can check here, lift up, and now punch him back down the side, as well as now that we have our slide coming from here, we know, so now when he runs away, we have a chance to either, as he passes it, trail check, or carry the double out, we call mine, and now it gives us time to recover it. All right, same thing, we approach flat. All right, approach, 45, get a good piece, we trail. Now as he comes up field, we're pushing, stepping up field, getting that free arm, lifting it up, and pushing him out. All right, now down the side, you're gonna see, First approach is down the side, the second approach in the middle of the field is going to be flat. So now he's either forcing him back into traffic here or he's going to get beat out wide where he's not in traffic. Alright, so ball comes here, 45, a good piece, and we ride him out. As he throws back, we approach flat to the top. So now we want to try to force him here, but now if he does beat us, we're going out wide this way, filling space, and he's not in front. Well, that's a, that's a great point. Once a man or dodger commits to a side, that's what we want to take to the end and be able to stop that. Once they cross, actually, we want to push and get them back to the end. Our goal is to not let them cross the goal line. So if you get beat, it should be underneath where the slide is coming. We want to be careful bring our stick over the top. It's an easy way to stay on the man's hands, but we are risking more than that. It's the only time we commit to bring our stick over the top when we are turning on the end inside. Um, you know, pushing the off his line, hanging on the back. Practice right, the drill, we do just simple turn. We'll line up on the goal line extended, and two top guys are as if their uh, attackers are going uh, right in, the guys at the bottom going left. The main teaching points of this one are feet first. You can take the stitch out of your hands if you want. So we'll back All right, so feet first. The first thing that moves is their feet. We're getting. Uh, we're turning them back to X. Next thing is we want to re-emphasize uh, getting their chest pointed to the opposite coast. We want to be looking over here. 
Right, so at the end of the drill, they should be chest looking to the opposite corner of the field. So we'll do that on both sides. <coughs> you go drill. Now this is a full speed um, turn drill. Well, have two lines up top, uh, behind the cage, and on the whistle, the first guy will go. The defender has his back to it, so he doesn't know which way he's going. It simulates a dodger who has a step on us. So now we're using the crease and taking a good angle to, uh, to get our turn now. Uh, this is going to be key to the next book you show that he works on the stop here, and now we have to take a good angle around the net so we don't get tripped up and turn to the inside. Uh, you're going to see here, again, we emphasize on the last one, we emphasize getting your chest pointed to the opposite corner. Uh, <coughs> right here. Yeah. All right. Takes a bad approach. And, and mm. this stop actually goes to target. One more time you can see, right? We should, one, we're getting out late. Uh, we're getting out late. Two, we don't take a deep enough angle to now not get tripped up on the net. The start of this clip goes back to the uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The clip of uh, good technique. This one goes to X. Uh, you're going to be watching. You're watching this guy right here. Uh, you're going to see he trails, sticks out, always making contact, always staying in his man's hands. Uh, just force the next, trail, 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 contact. Uh, we want to fight for that goal line, we want to turn it back, under control, same thing, we trail, trail, just in case. Keep pressure on his hands at all times. That goes back to the corner drill, all right, just in case. Easily spawn, and that'll be to the top stop. So open up, beat him to X, and throw any check when we should it. Never get our hands on them, I stick them to stay out, it comes straight out here, and now we get beat for the top stop. We have ball, or we have our feet under us, and we are at risk of getting beat. The only checks I've talked about are slap checks on the gloves, drill checks, and cross checks. Anything involves one hand isn't allowed. Our job on defense is not to take the ball away. We want to use great one-on-one -on -one team defense to give up pouring with shots, turnovers on perimeter to GBs, and outside shots to boys with safe. Guys, one quick note on that. <coughs> My We'll allow him, we give him a little bit of liberty to throw some checks. Nothing over the head, nothing that's going to put him out of position. Um, poke, slap, cross, back, back, and the most underrated, the lift check. Just a simple, your man's going around the cage, you lift on his gloves, that makes him feel uncomfortable, he can't pass shoot like that. One of the biggest keys to success, to the defense behind the goal is staying in our man's hands and not allowing him to see the field. One clip where our defense was all over our attack, and again, made him feel uncomfortable. We're helping all four play. Uh, Syracuse, a lot of cutters, but we allowed our attacking at times to see the field. So that killed us. Now, he, he's not uncomfortable. He's feeling comfortable behind the cage. He can see the whole field, able to uh, hit cutters and make feet. Right, well, it's a quick clip. Why well, we don't want to throw checks? You can see right down here. All right, you see he throws a couple of good slap checks, goes to lift, but then after the lift, he decides to go over the head. All right, and especially coming up around 10 yards in the hash. The last thing you want to do is go over there. I'm going to be on here, but that's the last thing you want to do. You want to keep fighting for that top side and pushing them all the way up here. <coughs> 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 <coughs>